Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shari Aqil. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa patronized today the concluding ceremony of His Majesty King Hamad's Cup for the 4 km military suburb championship, the annual shooting competition and the United Tug of War Championship and Parachuting, part of the Bahrain Defense Forces Golden Jubilee at the Electronic Shooting Range. Upon arrival, His Majesty the King was received by Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Ahmed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, Commander of the National Guard, Lieutenant General Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, Defense Affairs Minister, Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Jalahma, BDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Dhiya bin Slagar Al Naimi, and a number of senior officers. His Majesty the King was accompanied by the Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Brigadier Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and Minister of the Royal Court, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. After the royal anthem was played, the ceremony commenced with the recitation of verses from the Holy Quran. Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi yajma'een. Sayyidi Hadrat Sahib al Jalala, al Malik Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa, Ahil al Bilad al Mufadda, al Qaid al A'la, Havidakum Allah wa Ra'akum. سيدي صاحب المعالي المشير الركن الشيخ خليفة بن أحمد آل خليفة القائد العام لقوة دفاع البحرين أصحاب السمو أصحاب المعالي والسعادة. The Secretary of the Bahrain Military Sports Federation, General Secretary Commodore Nurman Rashid Al Hassan, gave a speech in which he congratulated His Majesty the King on the occasion of the BDF's Golden Jubilee. He lauded the achievements of the BDF affiliates and their contributions in the development march in all fields. He praised the affiliate sacrifices and their efforts to maintain the security of the country, as well as promoting Bahrain and the BDF in various events. He also hailed the directors of His Majesty the King, which aided them and their accomplishments. Al Hassan hailed the development of military sports which reinforced Bahrain's status on the global sports map. He hailed His Majesty's support of sports as well as His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the BDF Commander in Chief and hailed the participation of His Highness. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا فتحنا لك فتحا مبينا ليغفر لك الله ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر ويتم نعمته عليك وَيُتِمَّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكَ وَيَهْدِيَكَ صِرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا وَيَنْصُرَكَ اللَّهُ نَصْرًا عَزِيزًا هُوَ الَّذِي أَنْزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لِيَزْدَادُوا لِيَزْدَادُوا إِيمَانًا مَعَ إِيمَانِهِمْ وللله جنود السماوات والأرض وكان الله عليما حكيما ليدخل المؤمنين والمؤمنات جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها 
خالدين فيها ويكفر عنهم سيئاتهم وكان ذلك عند الله فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة إنما حققته الرياض العسكرية من نقلات معنوية كبيرة وتطور الرياض يشهد له القاصي والداني عزز مكانة البحرين على خارطة الرياض العالمية He congratulated His Highness Sheikh Nasser on his sports achievements and wished him success in the Ironman World Championship which will be held in Kona Lahai. Al Hassan expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty's patronization of this annual championship. He also thanked the BDF Chief of Staff, Assistant Chief of Staff, Unit Leaders and Directors for their keenness to participate in the championship. He prayed to Allah the Almighty to preserve the Kingdom in its safety and stability under the leadership of His Majesty the King. ومن دعم سيدي صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد نائب القائد الأعلى النائب الأول لرئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله وسيدي صاحب المعالي المشير الركن الشيخ خليفة بن أحمد آل خليفة القائد العام لقوة الدفاع حفظه الله ومن مشاركة سيدي سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد آل خليفة أخوانه الرياضيين للعديد من المسابقات وهو ما يمثل الدافع والقدوة لهم مباركين لسموه إنجازاته الرياضية التي يفتخر بها جميع منتسبي قوة الدفاع متمنين له التوفيق والنجاح في بطولة العالم للرجل الحديدي والتي ستقام في كونا بلا هاي The military competitions then began for the military suburb race, tug of war, and military shooting, followed by the military team's parachuting parade. عدد 125 ضابط من 19 وحدة من وحدات قوة دفاع البحرين. سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة تبدأ بعد قليل منافسات المركزين الثالث والرابع لبطولة شد الحبل العسكري للوحدات بين فريق كتيبة المشاة الآلية التاسعة عشر وكتيبة المشاة الآلية الملكية الحادية والعشرون سباق الضاحية العسكرية للضباط النقيب مبارك حمد الصليطي من القوة الخاصة الملكية الحائز على المركز الثاني وكذلك المركز الثالث من الحرس الملكي سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة نستكمل الآن منافسات بطولة شد الحبل العسكرية 
لتحديد المركزين الثالث والرابع سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة تبدأ الآن منافسات الرمايات العسكرية أولا إسقاط الصحون بالمسدس مسافة 20 متر على المركزين الأول والثاني بين الحرس الملكي والكتيبة الخاصة الثالثة والثمانون مسابقة إسقاط الصحون بالرشيش الـ MB5 مسافة 40 متر على المركزين الأول والثاني بين الحرس الملكي والقوة الخاصة الملكية مسابقة إسقاط الصحون بالبندقية مسافة 200 متر على المركزين الأول والثاني بين كتيبة المشاة الآلية الملكية الثالثة عشر والقوة الخاصة الملكية فريق القوة الخاصة الملكية من الفوز بالمركز الأول في مسابقة إسقاط الصحون بالبندقية مسافة 200 متر. رماية المسدس 9 ملم لفريق السيدات من وحدة الشرطة العسكرية الملكية. At the end of the ceremony, the parachuting team and the shooting team at the Royal Military Police Unit for Women, who participated in the skeet shooting with guns, greeted His Majesty the King. ستبدأ بعد قليل مسابقة شد الحبل. لتحديد المركزين الأول والثاني بين وحدتي القوة الخاصة الملكية والحرس الملكي شارك فريق القفز الحر بالمظلات لقوة دفاع البحرين 
في بطولات إقليمية ودولية وحقق العديد من الإنجازات على مستوى الفريق والمستوى الفردي في لعبتي إصابة الهدف والتشكيلات الجوية الخارجية والداخلية وهي كالتالي بطولة لندن الدولية للقفز داخل المروحة في شهر مارس 2017 حقق الفريق الأول الميدالية الفضية والفريق الثاني حقق الميداليات الذهبية بطولة العرب وكأس الخليج الأولى داخل المروحة والتي يقيمت في مملكة البحرين في شهر مايو الماضي وكانت النتائج على مستوى الفرق والفردي نشاهد العلم الخاص بالذكرى الخمسين لتأسيس جلالتكم حفظكم الله قوة دفاع البحرين مع أحد رجالكم من فريق القفز الحر His Majesty then distributed the cups and prizes to the winning teams. The results were as follows. In the Skeet Shooting with Guns competition for officers, third place winner Royal Shield, second place winner Special Battalion 83, and in first place the Royal Guard. As for the Skeet Shooting competition with MP5 machine guns, the third place winner was the Royal Shields team, the Royal Guard won second place, and the Special Forces won first place. In the skeet shooting competition with shotguns, the Royal Air Defense Force team won third place. The Royal Motorized Infantry Regiment 13 won second place and the Royal Special Force came in first. And in the Sniper's Military Competition for Units, First Sergeant Nawaf Khayed Khalifa from the Royal Guard won third place. Corporal Wafid Salah Thanna from the Bahraini Royal Air Force won second place. And Sergeant Ahmed Rahil Khalaf from the Royal Motorized Infantry Battalion 13 won first place. A precision shooting competition for guns for officers was also held where the individual categories Major Abdelaziz Mohammed Al Azami from Special Battalion 83 won third place and in second place came Lieutenant Colonel Khaled Ahmed Al Rawai'i. Captain Abdullah Mohammed Al Rumayhi from Special Battalion 83 won first place. As for the team's category, the Royal Motorized Infantry Regiment 4 won third place, preceded by the Royal Guard, and in first place came Special Battalion 83. A precision shooting with machine guns was also held for both individuals and teams. Major Salman Jassim Al Ghatam from the Royal Guard, Sergeant Mohammed Mansour Al Umari from the Royal Special Force, and First Sergeant Khalifa Daij Khalifa from the Special Battalion 83 won third, second, and first place, respectively, in the individual's category. As for the team's category, the Royal Guard won third place, Special Battalion 83 won second, and the Royal Special Force won first place. In the, shot, rather, in the shotgun precision shooting competition, Deputy Ahmed Askar Abdullah from the Royal Special Guard won third place, Major Mohammed Ahmed Al Bouainin from the Royal Military Police Unit won second place, and Sergeant Abdullah Ali Ahmed from the Royal Motorized Infantry Regiment 13 won first place. In the competition's team's category, the Royal Motorized Infantry Regiment 4 came in third, the Royal Special Force in second, and the Royal Motorized Infantry Regiment 13 came in first. And in the military tug of war competition, the Royal Motorized Infantry Regiment 19 won third place, the Royal Guard won second place, and the Royal Special Force won first place. In the parachuting team, First Sergeant Khaled Ahmed Al Mishrah won first place, First Sergeant Nasr Abdullah Nasr won second place and Sergeant Hussein Ahmed Mohammed won third place. In the four kilometer military suburb championship for officers in the individual's category, Captain Mbarak Hamad al-Salaiti of the Royal Special Force won first place with a record of 12 minutes 14 seconds and Captain Mbarak Hamad al-Dosari of the Royal Guard with a record of 13 minutes and 14 seconds won second place and Lieutenant Abdullah Mohammed al 
Arjani of the Royal Guard won third place with a record of 13 minutes and 19 seconds. And in the team's category, the Royal Field Engineering Unit, the Royal Special Force, the Royal Guard won first, second, and third place, respectively. His Master of the King's Cup for military shooting and sports activities for the year 2018, the Special Royal Force won first place with 130 points, the Royal Guard won second place with 125 points, and the Special Battalion 83 won third place with 60 points. His Majesty the King expressed admiration with the team skills that reflect military competency and the strength of the BDF personnel and the high-level combat readiness and professional training. His Majesty praised the efforts of the BDF personnel in defending the country and maintaining its security. His Majesty also hailed the BDF sports achievements and various regional and international events, congratulating the winning team and expressing thanks to the championships, participants, trainers and organizers, wishing them every success. The chairperson of the Consultative Council of the National Initiative for the Development of the Agricultural Sector, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, inaugurated Bahrain International Garden Show yesterday, held under the patronage of His Majesty the King. Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa expressed sincere thanks and appreciation for the royal patronage of the agricultural sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain underlining the importance of this patronage on the progress of the agricultural sector and the acceleration of national efforts to promote the culture of spreading green spaces in the Kingdom of Bahrain as a cultural and humanitarian feature and supporting special activities and programs to raise the sector's contribution to the Kingdom's GDP of the national economy. Her Royal Highness recalled the historical efforts of the rulers from Al Khalifa and their interest in agricultural development and their support for many specialized activities, particularly the Bahrain Garden Show, which started as a national event since the 1950s. She called for the importance of food safety and human health through proper produ rather production, which ensures the provision of agricultural products. Her Royal Highness stressed that the theme of this year's show is a shed of light on the agricultural aspects of practices that should be taken into account by presenting the latest technologies in the agricultural production and irrigation processes to ensure the quality and safety of crops. Her Royal Highness honored the winners of the Bahrain Garden Club competition where Faiqa Al Awadi won the cup of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in the garden category. Najah Al Khadr won the cup of the late Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa for the category of flowers and Tariq Jabari for vegetables category. Dr. Ahmed Abdullah won the award of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa for professional photography. Ishaq Madan in the amateur category, Noura Hamad Saleh for the students category, Ayman Al Jabari for His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa award for best garden category. And Taha Jabari with Sheikha Haya bin Mohammed Al Khalifa's best show of rare and exotic plants. The show is attended by 155 exhibitors from Bahrain, as well as a large number of companies specialized in the agricultural field from different countries of the world, such as the United States of America, France, Italy, Netherlands, Russia, Greece, United Kingdom, Japan, India, China, Indonesia, Turkey, Mali and a number of agricultural companies from regional and Arab countries such as Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Morocco, Jordan, and Syria. The exhibition will host the Farmers Market Pavilion where 14 selected Bahraini farmers participate in the show. The exhibition also includes a children's pavilion. The National Initiative for the Development of the Agricultural Sector will organize specialized courses throughout the exhibition on the quality of food products in cooperation with four Greek companies specialized in the production of organic foods such as organic olive oil, natural honey and natural herbs, and avocado production. These courses aim at introducing specialists and production methods and opening horizons of cooperation for partnerships and new trade between Bahrain and Greece. The Bahrain International Garden Show is sponsored by Bahrain World Trade Center, Kuwait Finance House, Viva Bahrain, Alba, GPIC, and Mumtalakat Bahrain Holding Company.
The beautiful spring event has become an international landmark full of innovation and achievement. It strongly established itself as a leading gardening show in the Arabian Gulf and a perfect opportunity for exporters as well as investors into gardening, green products, agricultural sectors and related industries to introduce themselves to regional and international markets. The Bahrain International Garden Show has come such a long way. There is strong international participation at the show. There is very strong local particip participation at the show that's rich and beautiful. The organizations who, are, who have been with us have been outdoing themselves year after year. I'm also proud to say that the Garden Show has helped many a business launch itself and its services at the Garden Show so that people get to know them. The show highlights unique and successful experiments that reflect the value of local and foreign participations in agriculture and landscaping and attention to greenery, attracting 155 exhibitors from Bahrain and all over the world to exchange successful experiences and showcase their various agricultural products and services with a great focus on health and safety. I'm from West Africa, Mali and um, I've been invited here to show my textile design work, uh, all dyed with natural dyes, with uh, indigo dye. So what I'm offering uh, was very special here is uh, how from green leaves we can make all those different shades of, of blue. I think this is a fantastic exhibition. It's a great opportunity for us at David Harbour Limited to showcase our work internationally. Uh, we um, value our Middle Eastern orders and our Middle Eastern clients greatly and this is a fantastic platform from which to do that. Very proud to bring this bamboo house to the people of Bahrain here. Bamboo house is uh, is eco-friendly, it is the most sustainable product and everyone is going eco now. It is amazing to know that bamboo grows around three to four meters a day, so that talks about its sustainability. Our company is dealing with organic Cretan herbs, uh, loose tea. Uh, this means that we offer you whole leaves or parts of plants which are cultivated in Crete. They are all uh, organic certified. We are trying to share our experiences when it comes to food safety and the sustainability of the agriculture sector in total. Uh, as I said, it's an honor for us to share this experience, not only from us to uh, the participants in here, but also from them to us. We're trying to share their knowledge and we're trying to take it back home as well. Everything that has to do with the food safety, basically we are looking after 14,000 food establishment in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi alone. Uh, in order for us to do this, we need to adopt technology. So what we are trying to present today is the full inspection system, uh, mobile system, it's on the field system, live data that gets transferred from the field to the back office. Moreover, students with special needs are actively participating and showcasing their talents and skills, aiming to compete in the market. Uh, this is the produce of our special needs students from Al Rahma Center. They, uh, they started with an empty plot of land with nothing in it, and we've ended up now with crops that we are showcasing at the garden show. Uh, we have found that this, uh, this program the, has, has changed them enormously. They have become more confident in themselves. The exhibition further develops the agricultural sector by supporting best practices, skills and talents through the annual contest of Bahrain Gardens Club. Uh, I'm the winner for the exotic cups and uh, it has mean the, the plants which is uh, rarely or difficult to be planted in the Bahrain. We use spring water and uh, no chemicals, uh, everything is 100% natural. That's why, that's the reason we are a little bit more special than the others. It's not only an annually anticipated event that dazzles the public with innovation and beauty. It carries an important message to the business community. Bahrain's agriculture sector is ripe for investment. Since its establishment in 2004, the International Garden Show continues to serve as an excellent platform for experts and enthusiasts to further develop their knowledge and skills in agriculture. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul -Ghafur. Under the patronage of His Majesty the King's Representative for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, the Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, the Nasser bin Hamid Falconry and Hunting Competition will, be, will conclude by holding the elite competitions of Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid and Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Cups. Falconers from Bahrain and the Gulf Cooperation Council countries will take part in the competitions. 
His Highness Sheikh Nasser welcomed all the participants from the Gulf countries, wishing everyone success. His Highness noted that the falconry and hunting competition was successful and hailed the efforts of the Supreme Organizing Committee led by Khalifa Abdullah al Gurud and all members and chairmen of all committees. The competitions ended with the Nasa bin Hamman falconry and hunting competition. The Representatives Council Speaker Mr. Ahmed bin Ibrahim al Mullah chaired the coordination meeting of Bahrain's parliamentary delegation. Participating in the 138th session of the Interparliamentary Union, the IPU, to be held in Geneva on March 24th to 28th. During the meeting, Mr. Al Mullah, the delegation head, asserted the importance of participating in the IPU meetings to highlight Bahrain's achievements and discuss the issues listed on the agenda. A number of meetings will be held for the Arab, Islamic, and Asian delegations to coordinate stances regarding the urgent issues to be discussed in the IPU meetings in addition to reviewing Bahrain's suggestion on supporting Jerusalem. In a special seminar, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, Dirasat, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa gave a lecture in the Royal Institute of International Relations in Brussels entitled, Regional Developments in the Gulf. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed asserted that the main key to understanding Iran's foreign policy and movements is the regime's employment of the religious aspect of the rule of the jurist or wilayat al-faqih in the world racist project of domination and expansion that is based on illegal mechanisms and violates international law. He added that the international focus on reaching an agreement impeding Iran's possession of nuclear weapons in exchange for concessions was a major strategic mistake. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah also noted that the role of the Iranian regime in manufacturing, financing, and sponsoring terrorism to arm cells to destabilize the countries of the region was ignored, in addition to Tehran's development of ballistic missiles of various kinds and its threat to maritime security and power supplies. He called on the international community to exercise effective pressure to contain the policies of the Iranian regime in undermining regional security and stability. Regarding the Qatari crisis, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah stressed that Doha ignored requirements of security and neighborly relations and tried to exploit the wealth of gas to gain regional influence through its alliance with the terrorist groups, resulting in its regional isolation because of its irresponsible behavior. He also stressed that the priorities of Bahrain's foreign policy is the constant work with allies and partners to enhance levels of cooperation and constructive coordination. In this regard, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah added that the European side is one of the most important external concerns of the kingdom throughout history, noting that Bahrain believes in the importance of NATO in promoting peace and security. He pointed out that the Kingdom of Bahrain is keen on building a balanced and effective regional security system based on the principles of reform, sustainable development, fighting extremism and terrorism in all its forms, and non-interference in the affairs of other countries. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah affirmed that the Bahrain adopts an open and central vision of moderate Islam and His Majesty the King's reform project is based on diversity, achieving sustainable development, providing and protecting freedoms, and positive international cooperation. He pointed out that Bahrain is an active partner in the International Alliance Against Terrorism, the Islamic Military Coalition to Combat Terrorism, and is working hard to counter extremism. The seminar was attended by a number of chairmen of Centers of Strategic Studies, ambassadors, specialists, and the media. The commander of King Hamad University Hospital, Major General Dr. Salman bin Atayatullah Al Khalifa, announced the hospital's intention to launch the National Tumor Board to benefit from the available medical expertise in the kingdom and provide consultation and treatment plans to patients with tumors. He added that the board will follow up and discuss new cases and that tumor boards have proven their efficiency in many countries. He continued by saying that King Hamad University Hospital will gather all the committees formed under each hospital with doctors from different medical backgrounds. For his part, the head of the oncology department at King Hamad University Hospital, Dr. Ilyas Fadl, noted that the board will act as a linking point between patients and doctors with different specialties. He noted that the board will hold regular meetings to discuss the diagnosed cases in Bahrain and with consultants. He stated that the goal is to develop a case study before treatment, affirming that it will provide patients with comprehensive treatment and medical care.
Today uh, we launched the tumor, the National Tumor Board in uh, King Hamad Hospital. The National Tumor Board, the idea of the National Tumor Board is that the primary physician will discuss his case with his other colleague from other hospitals, including Salmania, uh, private hospital, and from the military hospital. They will discuss how to plan the management of the case. So if case, uh, there, there will be a pathologist, there will be uh, uh, oncologist and uh, radiologist. All these will sit together and plan the, 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 the how to uh, manage that tumor case. So when they, they manage the case, they, uh, the responsibility will be the primary physician. But uh, he will be advised, this is the best way of handling that case uh, for the patient. And if, if the tumor board decided that, well, this case is complicated and we think that we have to send the patient abroad, the tumor board will be responsibility that it will send the patient abroad. So this uh, tumor board is only of a benefit to the patient. So I advise all the patient to ask their physician, please discuss my case in the tumor board. And it is, as you said, it will be held twice a week so there'll be no delay, and if the diagnosis is there, then they will discuss the case and the plan the management of, uh, of the case, whether in Bahrain or abroad. And that will be of a benefit for the patient. The tumor board, or national tumor board, you know, uh, the word national is like a big word, because like, I don't know how many national tumor board we have in the surrounding countries, but it's like a very important project. When we say national, it means like coordinating the efforts of every and each one all around the nation in order to have like one committee taking care of all patient uh, of all Bahraini patient or patient living in Bahrain. Uh, the main target, the main object of this tumor board is to be able prospectively and before the initiation of any kind of treatment to have a completely or elaborated uh, uh, management plan concerning the whole aspects of treatment uh, indicated for this case, for the patient case, and this according to the international guidelines.